Now, what a day of racing we have out ahead of us at Royal Randwick. Four Group 1s in all, including the Australian Oaks, on day two of the championships. And that is a perfect segue to our next guest. Part two of our chat with the great Gay Waterhouse and her connection, of course, with Arrowfield Stud. 20 years ago, the winner of this very race was Sunday Joy. Sunday Joy's a neck in front of Shower of Roses. They're clear of Bramble Rose, but Sunday Joy getting good luck at last. Sunday Joy wins the AJC Australian Oak. Back to the horses. What about Sunday Joy? Uh, another connection with Arrowfield. Yes, and a connection with Arrowfield, of course, a connection with John Singleton. Mm. She, she was magical. She was very beautiful, Philly, very. I can use the word sexy, she was really, and I do think horses are sexy, they've got to have that sort of element of spe something special about them, some little essence that you hopefully see. But we, we secured her uh, in one bid and it was very, you know, in those days it was sort of a bit unusual and uh, of course Singo does things in different ways. And then of course she went on to be not only a top class race filly, uh, winning the Oaks, but then she went on to be a top class a broodmare for John mm. Singleton. Well, the dam is more joyous. Absolutely. More joyous. Well, what a racehorse. Oh, she was fantastic. She was tough as teeth. She was such a, a good, competitive, uh, determined uh, mare. And, you know, she just, you could feel she was rolling up her sleeves to go into battle. Those sort of horses are just, they're divine. Fashion the Field. How do you remember Fashion the Field? Of course, um, AJ Sires, Produce, second in the slipper. Very, very competitive filly. You know, those good fillies, um, or, or any good racehorse, shows himself, exposes himself very early. There's only one or two haven't. Um, platinum scissors and linesmen. But most of them show themselves very early. And they show this um, just a special, something special about them. Usually because they're very, they're very fluid, they're very athletic. And Fashionsville was exactly that. She was a very athletic filly, she was a very competitive filly, and she was very brilliant. Magic of Sydney? Do God, you, you are testing me. I know, I, I'm, I'm winding no, the clock no, back here. It's almost to, no. like this is your life, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I, I need oh, a big red book rather life. than the black folder. Magic of Sydney was the most handsome horse you would ever see. And I just fell in love with him as I did with uh, Nothing Like a Dame. But Nothing Like a Dame was a, uh, maybe a little bit more of a, a brute type, you could say. Mm. Uh, uh, Magic of Sydney was just drop dead gorgeous. He was such a handsome horse. And beautiful gait and very, very fluid horse. Really lovely. Look at a horse like Sweet Idea, third in the slipper. And she was a fantastic filly. And it's interesting that uh, a filly that we have at present uh, that uh, ran in the slipper but didn't run as well, Platinum Jubilee in many ways reminds me of her. Very athletic, very lovely filly. She was a top price filly of the, that year of the, the sales. And, you know, I just, I just had, to, had to have her because I knew that if I didn't have her, we'd be missing a major star in our stable. And that's exactly what she was. There's magic to this industry, isn't there, Go? We're, here we are in the middle of the autumn, the championships, we saw the slipper. And when you come to a place like Arrowfield and you see very much the, 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 the cradle to grave mentality, the wonder of, and it happens so quickly, their horses can go from being foals to out and out champions like that. Too quickly, and when I look at this, this page of the, the catalogue, I realise it's all too quickly because sometimes there are four generations that I've trained on the page. But uh, it's a great breeding ground, and they've got they've got lovely, as you can see in the background there, you've got lovely hill in the background which they need. You know, to be successful racehorses, you've got to have horses stretching and extending from a very early age. And that's what Arrowfield provides. It provides great pastures, but it also incorporates lovely hill-type undulating countryside, which is so important. Finally, what, what, what do you look for? I know you don't know what's under the engine sometimes. We don't know exactly what a horse is going to be, but people like you have been around this and have got such a keen eye. What are you looking for when you're looking at these yearlings? I often say it's like a boy looking at a girl. You don't have to say she's a pretty sort, you know it. And looking at a, a horse, uh, you, you're first of all looking for an athlete. So I'm looking, I don't worry about the walk, because Dad used to say, TJ used to say, I'm not buying a horse to win a walking race, you're buying an athlete. So when I go to the sale, they might have all sorts of different gates, but I'm looking for the horse that has that essence, that when he or she walks out of the box, there's just something that stays in your mind. And funny enough, the horses that really do stay in my mind. I try to secure, get our owners to try to secure, and so often,
they happen to be the, the really, you know, the autumn ballet, horses like that, or, or nothing like a dame. You know, they become the, the, the sort of rising stars or champions.